So I think most of the build to rent operators are actually getting, or, or they're doing a good job engaging with the wider community and also with local businesses and things. So I think just um, there's a basic benefit which they're creating communities and that's a really positive thing. I think a lot of them have quite a good focus on well-being and fitness and also getting people together which is very positive for well-being. I think in the broader area they are, you know, the engagement with local communities, supporting local communities, employing locally, all of those things are really positive. Um, maybe what could be done better is more engagement with the wider community. I think sometimes schemes feel a little bit like gated communities and they don't feel very externally facing. Not all build to rent schemes, but some. And I think that maybe what they could do better is a better, broader engagement with local people, particularly in an area that's being regenerated where there's a sense of, you know, is an expensive option for living. So where there's a bit of a sense of them and us, I think that um, there could be more proactive, positive engagement, um, particularly things like working with local schools, working with local charities, and getting the residents involved in it in order to create something that feels genuine rather than a ticking a box. So I think it's already played a really vital role in regeneration. If you look at particular schemes where they're in areas, I mean if you look at Croydon as an example, um, or areas like Manchester, and but you know there's really good examples of where Build to Rent and other development, but Build to Rent has been able to fast track redevelopment and also fast track um, in communities that are lived in quite quickly compared to the sales market. So I think that they've done a lot. I think the fact that um, they have um, a, a, an active, a fast active community means that it probably makes ground floor uses more sustainable when they're not part of the development. So I think it's much easier from a retail perspective to encourage people into the ground floor use because they can show that they've got you know, people that are working from home, they're living there, and they tend to be not always at scale, but sometimes at scale. So if you look at things like Get Living um, in Stratford, and if you look at Quintain in Wembley, they've done a really good job in building ground floor and other uses alongside residential. Um, and I also think that quite a few of our clients, when we look at the uses of grounds floor, are happy to keep some of the ground floor use to make it part of the amenity space. So it's also reducing some of the space that's required to be um, let to a third party. And so it's helping to sort of, again, fast track sort of activation. So I think it's done, it's done that really well. So um, in most schemes, as part of a planning requirement, they have to deliver an element of social housing. Not everywhere, but in most places. So there's already a requirement to deliver social housing. Um, I think where the challenges are is in the sort of gated community, them and us, um, limited access to amenity space. So you have to create a genuine community. So you don't have... Obviously you need to deliver the social housing, but you also need to deliver a place that's successful for everybody that lives in it. And I think there's more that could be done. Often we're seeing in build to rent, um, uh, discount market rent as opposed to sort of proper, what I would call some proper social affordable. Um, so there's a mixture of social housing. But I also think that we should recognise um, the range of housing that's being of being delivered rental housing. So it's not all top end. It is, there are people delivering to the mid market and to the affordable sector. And I think that what's interesting in respect to sort of impact investment is a, a better understanding of the, the societal benefit of rental housing as a whole, as opposed to segregating sort of social housing and private housing and, and not understanding how they fit together and can work really well together. So this is a huge topic, isn't it? How do you answer this? In a, you know, but I think um, it's definitely risen up the agenda. I think there is quite a lot of um, uh, box ticking. Um, it needs to feel 
genuine and honest and I think from the customer's perspective they can tell when it's genuine and honest and when it's not. I think things like um, cost of living increases have fast tracked certain ESG um, activities which has been very beneficial so it's almost like a byproduct of something else that's happened but I think that um, when we talk about ESG we often talk about quite a limited number of things so your questions around community are often not what um, people are really thinking about when they talk about ESG so it can be quite pinpointed around energy efficiency whereas it needs to be a broader conversation so I think the answer is we can always do more and it, we are at the early stage of understanding how to do it well and what success looks like.